Hello and welcome to this day in history for January 25th. January 25th is the 25th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar with 340 days remaining to the end of the year, except for leap years in which there are 341 days remaining to the end of the year. We're still talking about those I before E words, words that defy the rule of I before E except after C or the sound of long A as in neighbor or way. And today's word is obeisance, which can be pronounced obeisance or obeisance. Obeisance is a noun meaning a gesture of submission, such as a curtsy or deference or homage. This word comes to us from Old French, obeisance, which comes from obeir, which means to obey, which comes from Latin, obedir, to obey or to listen to, which comes from ob, which means toward, and audir, which means to perceive. Ultimately, this all comes from the Indo-European root aw, which means to perceive, which also gave us audio, audit, obey, auditorium, anesthesia, aesthetic, synesthesia, and clairaudience. The first documented use of obeisance was 1382. I want to pause for a moment and mention that links to my research are included in the show notes and encourage you to go ahead and click that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share your thoughts with me in the comments section and feel free to share this video. Moving on, we're going to start with the year 1533 when Henry VIII of England secretly married his second wife, Anne Boleyn. We've talked about Henry before and how he decided he didn't want to be married to Catherine anymore and Pope wouldn't grant him a divorce, so he put Catherine away and married Anne. January 25th, 1759 is the birthday of Scottish poet Robert Burns, who's best known for the lyrics of the song popularly sung at New Year's celebrations for Auld Lang Syne. And the reason that song is so hard to understand is because it's all written in Old Scottish. In 1776, the Continental Congress authorized the first National Revolutionary War Memorial in honor of Brigadier General Richard Montgomery. On this day in 1858, the Wedding March by Felix Mendelssohn was played at the marriage of Queen Victoria's daughter, Victoria, and Frederick of Prussia, and it then became a popular wedding processional. I'm sure you've all heard it, know what it sounds like, but I've placed a link in the show notes if you'd like to hear it again, just as soon as you're done watching this video. On January 25th, 1905, a 3,106 carat diamond was discovered at the premier mine in Pretoria, South Africa. At 3,106, actually 0.75 carats, that is about 0 0.621350 kilograms, so almost uh, almost two thirds of a kilogram, or one and a third pounds. It was christened the Cullinan after the owner of the mine, and is the largest diamond ever found. On January 25, 1919, delegates to the Paris Peace Conference formally approved the establishment of a commission on the League of Nations. On January 25, 1924, the first Winter Olympics took off in style in the French Alps. Spectators were delighted to watch the ski jump and bobsled, along with 12 other events involving a total of six sports. On January 25, 1937, The Guiding Light debuted on NBC Radio radio in Chicago. In 1952, it moved to CBS television, where it remained until September 18th of 2009. The Guiding Light is what is known as a soap opera, which is a radio or television serial, usually dealing with domestic situations and frequently characterized by melodrama and sentimentality. They're called soap operas because as radio dramas, they were often sponsored by soap manufacturers. On January 25th, 1940, in 1942, Thailand declared war on the United States and England. Apparently, they were under the heavy influence of Japan, who were not our friends at the time. The first Emmy Awards ceremony took place on January 25, 1949. On January 25, 1961, President Kennedy held the first live television news conference. Also in 1961, Walt Disney Productions' 101 Dalmatians premiered. 
1964, Blue Ribbon Sports, which would later become Nike, was founded by University of Oregon track and field athletes. An Israeli submarine carrying 69 sailors disappeared on January 25, 1968, never to be seen again. Its disappearance and whereabouts are a mystery to this day. On January 25, 1971, Charles Manson and his followers were convicted of murder for the 1969 Tate LaBianca murders. Paul McCartney and Wings went to Japan in January of 1971 for an 11-day concert tour, his first visit back there since 1966 when he'd been there with the Beatles. Unfortunately, he took close to a half a pound of marijuana with him. <laughs> he insisted this was all for his personal use, and I believe that. It's probably true, but it was a large enough quantity that it got him a smuggling charge, and he spent nine days in the Tokyo Narcotics Detention Center to be released on January 25th, 1980. As recently as 1995, Russia activated its nuclear nukes for the first time. Their early warning defense radar detected an unexpected missile launch from Norway. Initially, they estimated the missile to be only minutes from Moscow, and they switched to combat mode. Five minutes later, they determined that the missile's impact would be outside Russia's borders. Fortunately, they did figure this out before they pushed the hot button. As it happens, Norway's missile was actually just carrying instruments for scientific measurements. And they had sent out notifications to 35 countries, including Russia, nine days previously. <laughs> but that notification somehow didn't get to the on-duty staff at the early warning center. Fortunately, Russia figured this all out and stood down before the accidental end of the world was initiated. Beginning in the mid-70s, a series of Apparently random, sadistic murders began taking place in Wichita, Kansas, followed by taunting messages to the local law enforcement and media in which the killer identified himself as BTK. The last of these murders took place in 1991. In 2004, BTK started contacting the media again with messages and packages that contained personal items such as jewelry and ID cards of the victims. In February of 2005, the killer sent a communique that authorities were able to trace back to him. A thorough investigation, including DNA evidence, resulted in a solid conviction. He was sentenced to 10 consecutive life terms in prison. He's currently 75 years old. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Again, links to my research are included in the show notes. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section and share this video with others. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Where were we? <laughs> that might not make it into the video, we'll see. Okay, let's try that again. There we go, good job. Not too salty though. It's gotta be just right. No, it's not. Okay, hold on. Okay, do that again. Okay, that's not a nice way to say it.